Sometimes when I'm making dolls for YouTube, making YouTube videos, I get so caught up in the creative process because that's the part I love the most that I forget to really tell you guys what I'm using, what I'm doing, and how I'm creating what I'm making. So I really wanted to start a little series here for the channel talking about your first face up, your first custom, and showing you guys the ropes of how I actually do what I do. Because there's nothing worse than being really passionate about something but having no idea where to start yourself. And I think a lot of us here on YouTube, when we show our doll creations, we want you to be able to make your own doll creations yourself and enjoy the hobby just as much as we do. If you know me here in the Auckland art scene, you know that I am completely against gatekeeping. I think it's so silly. I think if one of us thrives, we all thrive. And so I wanted to create this little archive, this little series, giving you all the details you would ever wanna know about doll creating so you can do it yourself at home. So I wanna take it back all the way to the fundamentals, which begins with the supplies you're gonna use for your first ever face up. I do of course live in New Zealand, so the price points that I mentioned towards the end of the video will be New Zealand price points, but I wanna run through everything I think is essential to creating a doll. So of course, the first thing that you're gonna need when you start your face up journey is Mr. Super Clear. Mr. Super Clear is a hobby sealant, which is available here in New Zealand at major hobbyist outlets such as Hobby City which is where I get mine, Hobby Station and all major hobbyist stores. It's not available at art stores like Spotlight or Gordon Harris or Hobbyland. It's more of a specialty item and therefore isn't carried in those places. The purpose of using Mr. Superclear is to create a surface that has grip that can take hold of the colored pencils and paint that you'll use and then seal it in. I use a rotating method when I shake mine up as this moves the particles away and around in a certain way that means I know it's going to be the most effective spray. There are multiple types of Mr. Super Clear or Mr. Hobby Mr. Sprays. You can use glossy, you can use super smooth, you can use UV cut. It's personal preference and my personal preference is UV cut flat because I know it's going to keep it safe from the sun and be matte. Ultimately, it is a spray plastic, so you do want to use Mr. Super Clear in a ventilated space, maybe outside, and you definitely want to use a ventilator if you are close to the spray. It's important to remember and treat Mr. Super Clear like a specialty item, and it isn't for anyone under the ages of 18, as it can be dangerous. And while it isn't the only option for a sealant to use to create a base, it is going to be the most beginner friendly, and it is going to be the easiest when you're starting out. Ultimately, though the bottle price is a bit expensive, you're going to use it for multiple face-ups and it's going to make their beginning processes so much easier, so I really recommend getting Mr. Super Clear. Next up, you're going to need an acetone-based paint remover. I use an acetone-based nail polish remover. It works best for me, but you can get pure acetone as well. If you are using a nail polish remover, you're going to need to make sure it has acetone as one of the first ingredients. You're going to use this to remove the factory paint off the original doll and use it if you make any mistakes in your process. Having used your acetone based remover and your Mr. Super Clear to set a freight base layer, you're going to move on to soft pastels. Now I was not a big fan of soft pastels when I started this process of doll creating. I thought they were messy and I didn't really know how to use them. The reason you want to choose a soft pastel though is because there is no oil in the pastel pigment because oil and Mr. Super Clear, they are not friends, they do not mix well. So instead of using say makeup or an oil pastel or another pigment that might be oil based, soft pastels really create a diffused color without messing with your sealant. Loads of brands do soft pastels. I use this brand specifically, but that's just because it's the cheapest one available. You by no means need to fork out the money for pan pastels if you're just starting out. You can get that same kind of free line uh, pigment without using those pan pastels because here in New Zealand, those are hundreds of dollars. So using a kid's soft pastel will create the exact same effect. For denser pigment payoff or finer details, watercolor pencils are going to be your best friend. Again, watercolor pencils are water activated, not oil activated, so therefore they're not going to have any issue with your sealant. When it comes to buying watercolor pencils, you kind of have two options. You can buy them in a set for, you know, $30, $40 for 24 to 48 pencils, or you can buy them individually depending on the colors that you want and need. 
I would definitely recommend when you're starting out, you want to buy some flesh tone colors and a black and a white if you are going to go the individual route. Because if you have pastels, you can definitely create diffused colors like eyeshadows and face and skin flushing without needing pencils. But you do definitely need pencils to go in for those finer thin line details. So these are my absolute holy grails, no gatekeeping here. These are the pencils that I basically use in every single face up. I want to show you guys the number and name so that if you did want to pick them up yourself, you totally can. These pinkier, fleshier colors I use to create the waterline on my doll's eyes, the lip colors, and any sort of wounds or gore that I'm going to do. I use a brown kind of pencil, either darker than the original flesh color or contrast color to create shadow and then I use these two colors pencils the most when creating a natural lip. Style and aesthetic preference is really going to inform you which color pencils you're going to be using the most of but without a doubt you're going to use white and black to create highlights and shadows. And of course, you're also gonna need acrylic paint. If you have the patience of a saint, you are gonna use acrylic paint where you might use colored pencils with a super fine paintbrush. I personally don't have the patience for that, but I do use Folk Art Matte acrylic paint almost exclusively to do skin tone changes and more pigmented details that I can't achieve with pencil alone. I pick these up at Hobbyland for around six, seven dollars a bottle. You're also going to need a kind of selection of glues for different purposes throughout your customizing process. My favorite like ride or die glue is 450 Quick Dry by Helmers. I use it for basically everything, but it is an acetone based glue, which means if it got into contact with your fresh face up, it's going to remove the paint and pencil like a remover wood because acetone just cuts through everything so it is kind of more difficult to use than say your traditional pva glue or your school glue for things that don't require a quick hold or are close to something like a face up i'll use elma's glue all or mod podge to make sure i'm not going to affect my you know face up that i just spent hours on I love Mod Podge, it's kind of an all-purpose glue and varnish and it's a do it all she does it all. So I use Mod Podge gloss for my eye glossing and lip glossing, I just like that it's got a thicker texture than some varnishes and it really does have that high shine. And then I also use Mod Podge to use as an adhesive or as a matte finish as well. And of course, fabric glue is also your best friend when you're doing miniature clothing because you don't need to seam everything with sewing. You can use fabric glue on this tinier scale. Now, you're going to need something to apply these glues and this acrylic paint, and that's where brushes come in. So with brushes, I have a whole bunch because I didn't always just do doll customizing. I did painting and other things, but there's really two specific kinds of brushes you're going to want, pointy and flat brush. So a pointed end brush is for those finer details. I use only synthetic brushes. Hobbyist brushes can be really expensive, so these Mod Podge brushes are a great scale and size and price alternative because hobbyist brushes just for one brush can be up over $10. So for me, these work perfectly. They're synthetic and they hold their shape really well and they're thin enough and small enough for the doll scale. Now, flat brushes, on the other hand, are used more for diffusing color and using with your pastels. So I use flat brushes pretty much exclusively for when I'm doing shading with pastels, creating eyeshadow looks, and using that diffused pigment because the flat brush carries the pigment easier. So moving more towards hardware kind of things, you're going to need a good pair of scissors and a good pair of pliers when you're doing doll craft. I have a whole range of scissors in different sizes for different purposes, such as my big ones will be sharper and used for fabric cutting, the little ones might be for cutting out patterns with really tight corners or cutting loose threads, hair cutting. I have scissors for kind of every purpose, but that is just my preference. You can have one size fits all scissors, it really doesn't matter. And pliers are also going to be your best friend on this tiny scale if you're deciding to do piercings or if you want to cut your own rerouting needles, you're going to need a good pair of pliers. 
And another important part of hardware is your needles. I use sewing needles for a lot of different purposes, for putting holes in for piercings, I cut my own for hair rerouting, and of course, the obvious one, sewing tiny clothes by hand. If you decide you want to try your hand at doll hair rerouting, you're going to need a rerouting tool. Now, what no one tells you when you buy these on Etsy is that these are just hand drill pieces. They're li it's literally a hand drill with a adjustable head that you can put your needle into. You can pick these up at your local hardware store much cheaper than you would on Etsy, and you can cut your own needles with a longer-eyed sewing needle. Now when it comes to threads for when you're hand sewing, if that is your preference, there are so many different types of threads and colors out there. I typically just use white and black, but you can of course color match to your outfit that you're making. Uh, pretty standard sewing supplies, you can choose between cotton or polyester or nylon thread, again personal preference. You're also going to want to pick up some ball top pins so that you can easily hold your tiny fabric together when you're sewing and the ball top makes it much easier to find them and pull them out when you need. Now, your actual doll choice is completely personal preference. I use Monster High dolls, you might be a Barbie doll person, it really is up to you, but finding a doll is the other challenge. When using secondhand dolls, here in New Zealand I use Trade Me or Facebook Marketplace, you can use eBay as well if you're in New Zealand or anywhere in the world. The secondhand market has really got more expensive recently as Monster High is having a resurgence, so make sure you shop around and find a price that makes sense for you. And if your doll creating journey takes you to custom clothes for your dolls, fabrics are going to be a big part of this. There are many, many types of fabrics in the world. Personally, I find the easiest and most cost effective for doll crafting to be fat flats, fat flats, I think is what they're called, but quilting fabric pre-cuts. They are pre-cut by like 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters basically, and that is plenty of fabric to make at least three outfits for a doll. I love picking these up at Spotlight here in New Zealand as they are often on sale for five for 15 or even better like eight for 15, so that they can be, you know, roughly three dollars or less per fat flat. And because they are quilting fabrics, they have really good scaled prints so that you're going to be able to get print scales that make sense and translate to the doll scale without being huge and human sized. They have heaps of novelty prints. They also have flat, like plain colors. I find this the best, most cost effective way to buy fabrics for my doll clothes making. And it is always cotton because it is quilt making uh, fabrics. It's a thicker, denser cotton that is going to hold pleats really well, hold shape and translate really well on that doll sized scale. Now let's talk hair, synthetic hair. There are so many options for doll hair, but I find when you're starting out, the best and easiest is pre-wefted hair. It's cost effective, like $3 from AliExpress and really easy to use if you're not ready to step into rerouting right off the bat. I've got a whole video coming specifically dedicated to hair choices because that is a huge part of your first face up. So stay tuned for that one. And now the final supply that I would recommend having on your first face up is Pearlex powders. Now these are loose pigment powders that are pearlescent and therefore shiny, uh, kind of like highlighter if you do makeup. And these are great to bring out the highlights on your face up and also just add some glistening, glossy kind of hyper realism to the skin texture of your doll. Okay, wow, I know that was a lot of information to lay down on you guys, but I really want you guys to know what you can use and how to really start your journey with doll creating. Now, I put a little roundabout telly on how much all of this would cost if you were to buy it straight up, first day, everything at once, and that's a roughly $150 investment into the hobby. But almost all of these things are gonna be reusable and you're gonna use them again and again throughout your doll crafting experience. And I hope this was a really helpful reference point to learn a bit more about the products used when creating dolls and kind of give you guys a launching pad to start your own doll hobby. If you enjoyed this, I've got heaps more coming in this series. The next up being your first face up, the actual face up. And the next after that being all about doll hair and the different types and products you can use. And we'll just see where it goes from there. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I can't wait to see you guys back here so, so soon with more crafts and more curios. Thank you so much for watching. 